Alright guys, so this is like most definitely going to be a shorter, shorter rank up survival dungeon video. Most of mine's are like almost podcast with how long they are. Which, you know, luckily somehow I always manage to stay on topic of the game. But, Quaist and Orc, Qu Quaist and Dork, the space orc, have both reached rank 3. Which is a big achievement because they were two monsters I've gotten only kind of semi recently. I think Quaist has shown up three times in Bounty Hunt, and I got him the second time, and he's in Bounty Hunt right now, so it was fairly easy to get his cells. And then Dork, he was just in here for long enough. And then, so now I'm just stuck in this scenario where I'm ranking up the rest of my trash monsters. And waiting until I get the rest of the Metropolitan Monsters so I can get them all to rank 3. Because, like, let me tell you, once I have all Metropolitan Monsters at rank 3, do you know how powerful I'm going to be? Like, the amount of book rewards I'm going to get out of that? Oof, it's going to be like... It's basically going to a book club and stealing everything in the room. You know? It's going to be great. I'm not sure when I'm going to rank up Chiel Long. Well, actually, I am sure. I've put him off for way too long, even though he's an actually good monster. So, probably sooner rather than later. Nah, because, like, I never unequip Kane's swords. So, I might have Kane's sword on, like, a trash monster. So, I'm afraid to give it to him, because I don't know if it'll ever come off of him. I mean, the other sword would be redundant. So, yeah, I'll be the first one to admit, this is a really bad team. But these are three monsters, wait, well, other than Gekon, maybe, three monsters that I don't care about, I just want them at rank three, you know? Like, it's not like, oh, you know, with Dork, I might be able to use him in a war scenario, so he'd be like a higher priority monster to get to rank three. No, it's, it's like, get them to rank three, then like, tip your hat to the warden, and walk away. Um, so, you know what? I'll just give you double damage. I did not think that through. You know what's funny? I could... Okay, watch this. This is kind of cool. So, look, they all have skill mirror, and the other two have anticipation. So, I do this, and now they all have one extra turn, and now they all don't have evasion. And then, Kevlar's Kest would have killed. So, look, Aura of Trust doesn't give evasion or hy hydrophobic shield. That's just still one of the coolest animations in the game, in my opinion. Then, boom, death door, 75% life removal. Which, I say that like it's not a big deal, but that is a lot of life. And then I think he stuns everyone. Yeah, so he team stunned, and then his sword kicks in, and Kevlar's vest kicks in. Healing mask, and boom. But we can all afford to lose one turn. And then now I can just... AoE and they're dead. I thought that was a pretty cool sequence of like what you can do with an extra turn in that node. But anyways, also, I'll still only ever, like, the internet part of me will still only ever see one thing when I see, um, butchering. Right? Like, a dude who's got a really strong arm. It's not suspicious at all. And it reminds me a lot of teenagers. So butchering, uh, I want to say he's an interesting specimen, but really he's like, it's plain and simple. He's do three taps and then a massive or an AoE and then he'll cycle it again. Decent attacker. I think if you gave him like all strength runes, you'd be able to like instant kill one enemy. But like, in my mind, it's so not worth it. Now, it's a pretty unique, pretty cool monster design. I'm glad he's in the game. Um, his attacks also kind of look cool because he just throws his butchering. Well, he throws his... Does he call his butchering? The, the, uh, I'm getting tongue twisted because his name and his weapon are basically the same. Does... His name is butchering, but does he call his boomerang butchering? I don't know. It's one of those questions that, you know, you write on your tombstone because you know no one in your time is going to come up with it. And look at that, thanks to Garuda, look, it increases your life. The way the nature beast works, it increases everyone's life, right? It'll increase it more if you're nature, but it increases everyone's nonetheless. 
and it's so much easier in this dungeon for you to always have a constant heal factor. Because if I, let's say I do a match with 10 health, and then I do the next match and Garuda gives me plus 5 health, now it thinks I have more health than I do. So going into the next match, it gives me a certain pretty good percent of my health back. So now, I'm just sitting here with like free health. And that's basically like why, whoa, those are some powerful dots. Basically why Garuda is so used, especially for the Metro Dungeon, because you can just use it. It increases the uh, triple nature team's life a ton. And then you can get them to rank 5 easier, which also upgrades Garuda. It's like... It's, 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 a word's gonna hit me in the face with a brick. It's a symbiotic relationship, but those aren't always bad. I was about to say, what if there's a move that gave weakness to everything, but that's kind of vulnerable, but it's not really anymore. Boom, look at this, look at this animation. He throws it, and then it comes back. But yeah, it used to be vulnerable because, you know, that would, it had the same exact damage amount and it wouldn't stack with um, elemental weakness because they both used to do, hey, if you've got vulnerable or you've got the elemental advantage, you'll do 50% more damage to your opponent. But now it's, if you've got vulnerable, it's a, you know, just a 50% increase. And if you've got elemental weakness, God help your soul, you're dead, right? Like that elemental advantage is just disgusting not literally but it is you know it's so high that it's like why just why so i'll give everybody a damage boost gems under the top hat my relic does some damage oh you're stacking up dots all right beyond the colors and then look at this um, here's the one turn, here's the two turns. So look at this. One turn. Two turn. So now I've killed two of them, and I could cycle it back, and I could do the same thing next turn, but I just do the massive. So he's a pretty fun attacker to play around with, but at the end of the day, his gimmick is never going to be meta. And then, yeah, I think I'm going to have to call it here for this video. Kind of an update video. I don't have enough time to do the entire thing, because that's like... 30 minutes right or 40 so that's about it for this video hope you enjoyed if you did leave a like to boost my ego and to support the video on my channel subscribe to join the crab army we are nearing 50 subscribers and once we have that milestone we can overthrow a small country so i'm looking forward to that and uh, leave a comment you know i'd love to hear your thoughts who are you ranking up um you know just anything so comment and i will respond and that's about it for this video. Your favorite Omnius Crab, signing out.